Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So today I wanted to talk about Master Core. And if you aren't familiar with what Master Core is, in summary, on a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5, you can go to the PlayStation Store and you can download a PS2 game. And in this case, it is a PS2 game called Okage Shadow King. With Master Core, basically when that game loads, it can run a exploit that is built into the save game file in order for you to run code that really wasn't meant to be ran. So you could do things, for example, send another PlayStation 2 game ISO and it will run on a PS4. And you could also do things like change the light bar on your controller. And obviously one of the big ones is, is that you can run Elves. Now, I pulled up all of the different repos for Master Core because what I wanted to show you was, was that there really hasn't been a lot of progress on Master Core over the last couple of months. So here is the main page, and we can see that this one has not been looked at since March 16th, or that was the very last time that there was an update to it. We can come over here into the sample, and we can see that there was a couple of different features that came with this release. But again, this one has really been there since... February the 23rd. Now, if we go to a, another library that was part of this whole package, and that was PYPSU, and this was the library that analyzed and helped you create these PSU game save files that you could run on a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5. And again, the other program, which was called OKRAGER, -E was an application that helped you generate that Okage Shadow King game save. Now, the two main repos was the PS2 Network Elf Loader. And here you can see, again, this one has not been updated since March the 8th. And if we go over here into releases and we go to that very last release, we can see that there was PS4 firmware 10.50 support. But the very latest thing that we see for the PlayStation 5 is setting right over here at 6.50, but this was really just a notification. Now, there are some of the payloads, such as the lot bars that will work on pretty much any version of the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 5, but some of the more important ones, you know, such as this PS2 Network Elf Loader, doesn't have support for the latest PlayStation 5 firmware. And now that also goes for the USB game loader where you could plug in a USB device and you could run a PlayStation 2 game locally. Now this does work with the PlayStation 4 and really all the way up to 10.50, but for the USB version, there absolutely is nothing there that is supported for the PlayStation 5. So what I thought that I would do was I would go straight to the source. And that is exactly what I did was, was that I started a conversation here with Macaulay and I did ask him if it was okay for me to share this information here on the channel. And he said that that would be fine. Now, I summarized everything that he wrote in the text here into kind of how I digested it. And hopefully this will be easy for you to digest as well. Okay, so just to start here, Macaulay has been busy with work and other projects. Now, he did mention conferences as well. And typically with security researchers or security experts, there's a number of those things that they do need to go to. They may be speaking at it, or they may be there to learn more about their craft. Now, he did state very specifically that he hasn't looked at PS5 7.02. And here is some of the words that he gave regarding that. He said that system calls currently are done using hard-coded offsets in certain library modules. These offsets are slightly different every firmware. And so to get them, we either need a decrypted dump of those modules or to 
brute force the offsets. And so basically what this means right here is, is that somebody has to provide the offsets in order for him to be able to add support for those firmware versions. Again, for the PlayStation 4, we really have full support up to 10.50. Now, he stated right here, he said that for the versions released, somebody has sent him the decrypted dumps so he could get the offsets. Now, we're probably all aware that there's some exploits that the public just doesn't know about right now for the PlayStation 4 and probably for the PlayStation 5. I absolutely have no source of credibility of even saying that. I'm just saying that in my mind, I believe that there are exploits that's out for the later versions of at least the PlayStation 4 that nobody has came forth with talking about, mainly because that is a payday. And keep in mind that there is no reason today for somebody that is a security researcher to give this exploit away for free. So for if you had a 10.50 exploit, that is worth a substantial amount of money from Sony. So they typically would want to get paid first, and then that exploit will come to the scene at a lot later time. Basically, when Sony feels that whatever patch that they've released is out in the masses. So there is obviously reporting on the PlayStation 4 and the 5 that sends it back to Sony about things like what version you're running and so forth. So they know what version their customers are on. He said that, however, it's likely the same as lower firmwares in that some master core things will work like the PS light bar and then some won't currently like the PS2 game load or the USB stuff as they require system calls. Now he did state that there is a way to overcome this problem without needing to decrypt the latest firmware files though. However, that requires being able to get arbitrary native code execution which, as he stated right here, which was part of CTERT's goal. If Macaulay or someone else can figure out attacking the compiler process to get arbitrary code execution, we can call system calls directly without needing the library offsets, so it'll remain working on all firmware versions. And obviously what he's talking about there is like the PS2 game loader, the USB loader, and so forth. So instead of updating these offsets with every single firmware, if we were able to do this, well, then it could be patched to where it didn't matter what firmware version your PS4 or PS5 was on, Master Core would just always work. Now, I did ask him, how can folks help? And it really came down to this right here. He needs help with reversing and researching the emulator compiler process. Now, I know that is something that a lot of us absolutely cannot help with. So maybe there are some folks that would be interested in doing this that has that skill set. Now, he does have some goals for Master Core. So looking into the future of Master Core, here's the top three things that he mentioned to me. The very first one was getting the exploit running on another game. And this game that was mentioned was Fahrenheit. So this is a physical disc, which is something that I've spent some time looking for as well. And that was PS2 games that got a physical release for the PlayStation 4. So Limited Run has made some of these games. But I really haven't been able to find any of these games that at least I could purchase without either spending crazy amounts of money or really not even knowing if anything would come out of it. The second thing that he had was figure out part two to get arbitrary native code execution. Now, the part two that is mentioned right here is obviously CTERT's part two that was located right up here. Now, if you don't remember, CTERT left the scene and I did make a video on this in case you want to watch this, but this was kind of that part of the series that we really didn't ever get. 
And while I know most of you are saying that he did release it, if you actually look into that blog post, you'll see that he didn't solve the issue that he was trying to overcome. And then the other goal here was to implement a kernel exploit for various firmware versions, which is something I believe the entire scene wants to see happen. So anyway, I thought I would share all of this information with you today because this is the latest, at least it's coming directly from Macaulay, and it gives us a bit of an insight on where things are at, what has happened, and really what's the goals for the future. So anyway, thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.